for Algebra 2. Hope you guys are doing good. Let's see if I can make a decent video for you guys. Okay. Um, try to remember what the kind of the last entries into our spiral notebook were. So um, if you can, go run to your backpack, pause the video, run to your backpack, and uh, go get your notebook from class because we're going to add to it today. Okay. Um, so laws of exponents, let's just do a little review. Product rule. Product means multiplying. So when you're multiplying and your bases are the same, so x and x, then you can actually just add whatever the exponents are, a plus b. Okay, um, so we got some examples in there. Y to the 10th times Y to the third. We just leave the base as Y and then you add the exponents. 10 plus three is 13. Okay, we get down to an example like number five when you have coefficients out front, so like regular numbers. Everything's just being multiplied. So we can multiply in any order we want. Um, so I can just multiply the 10 and the three real quick. That makes 30. Remember, there's a secret 1 in front of there, but 1 times 30 is just still 30. And then I'm looking for bases that are the same. So x to the 4th and x to the negative 1st, I can actually add up 4 plus negative 1. 4 plus negative 1 is 3. So x to the 3rd. y squared, there's no other y's, so I just leave it y squared. Okay. <clears throat> um, zero exponent rule. Uh, you guys are pretty dang good at that. Anything to the power of zero is one. Of course, we gotta be careful on things like number two, where you have a five W to the power of zero. That little power of zero is only going to the W. It has nothing to do with the five. This is technically five times W to the power of zero. So W to the power of zero is one, but then you do five times one and you get five, okay? Number three is different though. 5w is your base. I know the 5w is the base because it's grouped together. So you're taking all of that and raising it to the power of zero. But any base raised to the power of zero is one. So that just ends up as one. Four, five, and six look pretty dang similar. 10 to the power of zero, one. Negative 10 was within your base. Any base raised to the power of zero, one. Now this might seem like it's one also, but that little negative is not included in the base. So this is actually 10 to the power of zero, which is one, and then you stick a negative out front. Okay, how we say it in math is the opposite of 10 to the power of zero, which be the opposite of one, which is negative one. If you are asking why, why is something raised to the power of zero one? I'm very glad that you're asking that. Okay, and that's, you're gonna look down here for that. We drew a little table, mine might be different from what we did in class, but I'm kind of going off of memory here. So, <clears throat> if you start with like a base like four, four to the fourth is 256. That's four times four times four times four, okay? Four to the third is 64, four squared is 16, four to the first power is four. So if you look on the left hand side, all I'm doing is decreasing the exponent by one. Okay, so that's the pattern on the left-hand side. And we want to look for patterns on the right-hand side now. So from 256 to 64, that's just dividing by 4. From 64 to 16, we're just dividing by 4 again. From 16 to 4, we're just dividing by 4. Okay, so if we continue that pattern on, then we are going to take 4 divided by 4, which is 1. Okay, so that's kind of the reasoning behind it. Another thing we did in class, and by the way, if you were gone for any of this stuff, feel free to pause the video. You can write it down. You can listen and write what you want down, whatever works. Um, but then we learned about negative exponents. Negative exponents, remember I told you guys, like, first thing I want you to think of when you see a negative exponent is ill, right? Ill. And then the second thing is I got to fix it. Okay, so we gotta, we kinda make that negative exponent positive somehow. Now, this is one way I explained it to you, but I am, at the end of this video, gonna show you another way of thinking, okay? And it's how Khan Academy kinda went about it. But when I see three to the negative second power, really, that ends up being one over three to the 
positive second power, okay? So we kind of took this, we did the reciprocal, so we did one over, but now it's three squared, right? Positive two is your exponent. Well, three squared is nine, so final answer, one ninth, right? But I hope you're asking why. Why does this suddenly turn into a fraction? And here's why, let's look at bases of three. Three cubed, three times three times three is 27. 3 squared is 9, 3 to the first is 3, we just learned that anything to the power of 0 is 1, okay? But we can check that. So I just decreased the exponents by 1 on the left here. On the right hand side, 27 to 9, you're just dividing by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so clearly the pattern is dividing by 3. So we got to continue the pattern. 1 divided by 3 if you have a calculator handy, you can do that. One divided by three, you might get 0 0.3 repeated, like a decimal, but that's really just one third. One third divided by three, do it in your calculator. You're gonna get some crazy decimal depending on what calculator you have, but the fraction version of that is one ninth. One ninth divided by three is one twenty seventh. So if you notice, three to the third and three to the negative third, they have opposite powers One's positive, one's negative, and their answers aren't aren't opposites. That's not the correct vocab word there. 27 and 1 over 27th, that's called a reciprocal. Okay, the reciprocal of 27 is 1 over 27. You flip the numerator and denominator. 3 squared is 9, so 3 to the negative second power is 1 over 9. Okay, it's the reciprocal of 9. All right? So, number two, four to the first power, what I do, you can make a chart every single time and that gets time consuming. I just think, okay, I gotta change that negative one to a one. How do I do it? I gotta move this to the denominator. So one over four to the first power, which ends up being one fourth. Five to the negative third, change that to one over five to the positive third, which is one over 125 x to the negative eighth, I don't want a negative exponent, so I fix it, one over x to the eighth. Number five, sometimes gets kids, they wanna take all of this and put it in the denominator, but that's not true. This power, this um, base of 10 doesn't go with the negative two power, okay? If you remember, I'm gonna ask you, what's the power, what's the exponent on this 10? I don't see a number up there, so what's the secret exponent? That's one, okay? So if you really wanted to, you could write a one in there. So the 10 is fine, so this is just 10 times, and then what we have to fix is this x to the second, so that ends up being one over x squared, okay? And if you multiply that through, um, you can imagine 10 over one secretly. 10 times one is 10, one times x squared is x squared, that's your final answer. And then number six, um, I can't remember if I did this example with all classes, but I did something kind of like this with most of you. So um, we started with a big old fraction, bunch of stuff here. Um, three, what's the exponent on three? Well, there is no exponent. It technically is though, it's a one, positive one. So I don't have to change it. I don't have to like move that to the denominator. A to the fourth, that's a positive exponent. A to the fourth, we can keep it. B to the negative eighth, uh-oh, gotta fix that, gotta take that, put it to the denominator, B to the eighth. C to the tenth was fine, so I left it down there. D to the negative second, ew, negative exponent, I gotta move it. So instead of moving it from top to bottom, I move it from the denominator to the numerator, okay? And then the last thing we learned, or last thing we actually wrote down in your notebook was this power rule. And it said, if you have x to the power of a and you raise that entire thing to another power of b, okay, um, then what you end up doing is actually multiplying these powers. And this is not to be confused with your product rule. Bases are the same, add the exponents. This is a different situation. You have something raised to a power and then you raise that entire thing to another power. That's why it's called power rule. Sometimes it'll be called power of a power rule, and it's the same thing, okay? 
So number one, x squared raised to the fifth power. We um, think of this as whatever's in here is being multiplied by itself five times. So we have x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared. Now here, you're actually gonna go back and you're gonna use your product rule because right now you're multiplying. Bases are the same, all of these have a base of x, so I add the exponents. Two plus two plus two plus two plus two is 10, okay? You can see that again here, w cubed, and we're gonna actually square that. So we have w cubed times w cubed, which ends up being w to the sixth, okay? Now, um, obviously I want you to start using it like this. You can totally write it out, this is called expanded form, but eventually you just kind of need to pick up the trick of, okay, I just multiply two and five to get the 10. I just multiply three and two to get the six, okay? Um, number three, you have quite a bit of stuff in the parentheses here. So I did expand it out just so you could see what's happening, but we ended up with x to the six. So if you notice that three is really just multiplying by the two to get x to the six. And that three is just multiplying by four to get y to the 12th. Okay, so it's almost like, and this is not correct mathematical terms, but it reminds me of distributive property where you kind of multiply it through. Okay, you multiply the exponents. All right, now I put a two in this next one. I put a little two there. That five, so I'm not gonna do expanded anymore. I'm just gonna kind of distribute that five to every exponent. That five has to get distributed to each and every item in there, including the two, including the y. Just because they don't have written exponents in there doesn't mean they don't exist. So I did actually write in that one right there. And technically this y would also have a one, let me do it in red, it would also have a one right there, okay? So one times five is five. So I wrote two to the fifth. Two times five is 10, x to the 10th. 1 times 5 is 5, y to the 5th. Now we're going to simplify that if we can. So 2 to the 5th, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 32. x to the 10th, y to the 5th, final answer. Okay, and notice a lot of our answers are just kind of like shoved together, and that is a proper way to write it. <clears throat> if it bugs you, you could write multiplication dots in here. 32 times x to the 10th times y to the 5th, that's fine. It means the same thing. Um... Number five, it's kind of our go big or go home problem here. Um, quite a bit of stuff happening. You have power rule here, power rule here, power rule here. So we have to do our power rule first. And then it's going to be a lot of the product rule. There might be some zeros in there. There might be some negatives. Who knows? So let's look through that. So this outer three, this power of three, I distribute it to each and every item. Now, notice how I put this negative two in parentheses. That's because it matters. It matters if it's in parentheses or not. So I stuck it in parentheses because you can see it lives inside parentheses. So we have to protect the base, the sign of that base, and the sign's negative. Okay, um, that three also gets put on the w, w cubed. Three times three is nine, so x to the ninth. Two times three is six, y to the sixth. Okay, um, here, same thing. I distributed that negative, excuse me, I distributed that two throughout. Zero times two is just zero, so I did that. And then here, anything, when you group it up, any base raised to the power of zero is just one. So that really just cancels to one. Now we're gonna multiply all this. Negative two cubed ends up being negative eight. Negative three squared is positive nine. Negative times negative, positive. And then we just kind of group everything up that we can. So negative eight times nine is negative 72. W cubed, there's no other W's, so I just write it in. X to the ninth and X to the fourth. Now this is product rule. Bases are the same. You add nine plus four, we get 13, X to the 13th. Y to the sixth, there's no other Y's, so we just write it. Notice the ones I didn't even like care about because anything times one is just itself, so there we go. Okay, um, and then we're going to get into some new stuff. I think I might make another video for that. So that's a review of what we did before break, okay? And on another video, I'll, we'll add in quotient rule.
See ya.